Hi, it's Marianne of MW's Designs. This is another video in my Just Try It series, and I really hope you will try this craft. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to do this project in two parts. Today I'm going to show how I make the basic butterfly, and then next week I'll show you how I decorate them. These are some samples that I've already completed. I made the large one first, and I really like it, but um, it's kind of floppy. I think if I added another layer of two on the back, that might help firm it up. But I found that I really enjoyed making the smaller ones, and they do hold their shape really well. So I'm just going to set that aside, and I'm going to show you the butterflies in their very beginning stage where I have them painted and cut out into the butterfly shape. Then as it goes along there are various different stages where I add the edging and the body is glued on and the head. And first I'm going to show you what I do with the dryer sheet. I'm going to have it on a piece of parchment paper and what I first did with this was press it with a damp cloth to flatten out all the creases. You wouldn't have to do that step but if you don't press it you will have some creases and as, as you go along, it will get flattened out somewhat, but the, there still will be some creases. Um, these pink ones were done with um, the dryer sheet that I didn't press, and you can see there is a little bit of a, a crease in it. But again, as you add the decorations, that will become less noticeable, so it's up to you what you prefer to do. So I'm going to be applying gesso and gesso is an acrylic preparation that watercolor artists and multimedia artists use to prepare their base and what it does is um, it um, has what is called a tooth, so that the watercolor paint will um, attach to whatever surface you're using and the water from it will soak in. It's a thick liquid and I apply it with just a plastic spatula. So just put some on and spread it out. You don't want to have it too thick and it's kind of nice if you have some parts that have even a little bit less on it than other parts because that will give kind of a, a more butterfly wing effect, kind of goss gossamer. So make sure you flatten it out as well as possible. And just keep flattening it out so that you don't end up with a lot of bumps. And then you set that aside to dry. And I usually leave it at least four hours and sometimes even overnight. And you get some on your fingers, wipe it off. And I wipe my spatula off and then that's all I do to clean it. It's ready to go for the next session. And I will put my lid on my gesso so that it doesn't dry out. This can set aside to dry. And the next thing I'm going to do is paint. And again, I'm going to have a piece of parchment paper underneath. 
Okay, so this is dry and you can see it's nice and flexible. I like that. Then, okay, I'm just going to move these ones out of the way. And bring in my paints. Now I did use my Cotman Windsor Newton paints first. And I did have some nice colors from that. And I like those. But I decided I would also experiment and see how watercolor paints from the dollar store would work. And I found that that is actually quite work, quite doable. And I like the colors that I got from that, too. I have this nice vibrant pink and a really nice green. And I like this purple, too. Um, okay, so I'm just going to... Let's see, what color shall we use? Something different? Uh, maybe... Can you see this one? I'll just slide it over a bit. How about this blue? So just spray it and you can spray the surface of that too. And then I'm not using a good brush. It's just an, an older one that I have. Okay. And then just apply it. And you can make it as light or as dark as you want. It's up to you. Sometimes I think butterfly colors should be a, a little bit on the lighter side. But it's your butterfly, so you can do it however you choose. And then that will be set aside to dry. to cut out the butterfly shapes. Let's see. I think maybe this purple color would be fun to try first. I have a cardboard template and I just trace around with pencil and then of course I will cut it out. And when you're cutting it out, if you don't want any pencil lines on your butterfly, just cut on the inside of the pencil line, and then you won't have any pencil marks. I found, though, that if I do have a little bit of pencil mark showing, it doesn't really matter because it mostly will get covered up. So I really don't worry about it too much. I like to do these in batches just to be more efficient with my time. But for now I'm just going to do this one. And I can't quite see my line but I think I know where it is. cuts out very easily. This is nice material to work with. Okay, there's my butterfly and maybe I will bring up another piece of paper here. I don't really need it, but I will have it anyway. Okay, so I am using um, Liquid Pearl Drops from Ranger and also Stickles, which I like a lot. And I'll just show kind of the effects of the different ones. OK, 
Okay, here are my in process ones. Um, this is a very nice stickle um, version. It's called Crystal, and this bottle is empty, so I didn't even use it. And this one is called Ice Blue, and that's what it ends up looking like. And boy, these stickle ones really are sparkly. Uh, I didn't bring this one out, but uh, this is called Mercury Glass, and again, it's really sparkly, so I like that. Then the Liquid Pearl Drops. Um, I don't know what the name of this one is. It doesn't have it on the bottle, but, oh, this is my favorite. I like the really nice, smooth, shiny effect that it gives. And this one is pewter. Oh, and I don't have one with pewter, but it's kind of a silvery color. And then this is rose gold. And especially with this yellow butterfly, I really like the combination of the colors. Okay, and I always keep mine upside down so that it comes out more easily. And I think I am going to use this one because, as I said, I really like it. And with the um, Ranger products, the nozzle is tiny, so you get a very fine line, which is so nice. And you can see how well it comes out and is fairly easy to draw around the edge. And if you have to lift up, you can just set back down and it will smooth out. And if you have any spots that skip, same thing. You can just fill it in and it will smooth out. And I hold down the center with my finger so that I can control it a little better. Okay, so all that needs to do is dry. And again, it does take a while, at least a couple of hours. And depending on how thick, it can take longer. So I will set that one aside. And I'm going to bring these out because I'm going to show you how I do the body and the head. All right, let's, hmm, let's do a yellow one. Okay, so I have a little rectangle cut out and I use one of my, um, pointy round toothpicks and just whoop, I want the colored part outside so wrap wrap it around so that the colored part is out Okay, then you can actually, let's leave that in. I'm going to roll it a little bit tighter because it does loosen up as you're doing the gluing. Okay, so I have my pointy toothpick and just some Elmer's school glue but you can use whatever kind of glue you like. And I just apply a little bead along the edge. You don't want too much, but you want enough so that it will stick. 
stay stuck. And then just wrap this around and yes, you're going to get sticky fingers, but just wipe them off afterwards. Okay, and then pull your toothpick out and this will dry and end up with this. And, okay, I'm going to wipe my fingers. I think I like it better when I flatten the body just a little bit just to get a shape so that it isn't um, completely uniform. I think it looks better if it has a natural shape. Now I'm going back to this one that I just put glue on because it is coming apart and that that usually happens. So you just go back and wrap it up again and kind of push it with your fingers. You can even twist it a bit if you want to. Okay, that can set aside to dry. And let's use this one and glue on the blue. So I'm going to add this here. And I could have used a green body, but you can mix and match the colors. Now the body has to be just a little bit longer than the butterfly, but this is a little bit long. So what I'm going to do is cut a little pointy tail end. And that will give a nice effect for the bottom of the butterfly. Okay. Let's see. Maybe just a little bit off the top. Okay. Then I'm going to apply a bead of glue right down the middle. And glue it down. Okay. Now you might want to let this glue dry before you work on it. And I'm going to cut a little bit off. But I'm going to just do this anyway. Made it a little bit rounded. Then um, I use half pearls that are stuck on a sheet like this and I take them off and just have them handy on a little piece of cardboard. Now I'm going to apply the glue right where I want the head to go and I like to use my little tweezers. Um, actually you can't, these are a little too big to pick up that way so I just there and it just makes it easier to center it okay and that will dry and it will be the head and this is another one that needs a head glued on it so I would do that and um, then the next step will be next week where I decorate them. Okay, so I'm just going to set some of these aside and bring back my finished ones for you to look at again and some that are not quite finished. If you liked this video please give me a thumbs up and if you um, want to leave a comment or ask a question you can put that below. Hit the subscribe button and um, you can subscribe to my channel if you like it and uh, hit the bell beside to be notified of upcoming videos. Thanks a lot for watching.
Bye now.